Hey guys, welcome back um, from our lovely spring break. Um, this is going to be week five. Um, we are going to be looking at half of the last section of Antigone that we're going to be reading in the textbook. Um, uh, the directions are going to be posted online for you um, for the next four weeks. Um, just kind of keep up to date with that information as it's going out. Um, so you're going to be reading from lines... 1098 through 1281, 2, 3, 84, which again are going to be posted for you. Um, so that's going to be the first part of that last section and the sixth ode. So going over the review stuff from the week before the break. Um, which, if you haven't turned that in, would be a great idea to do so. Um, we had questions 5 and 6, and then 8 and 9 you were asked to work on. Um, so for question 5, uh, it was talking about a martyr, um, someone who dies for what they believe in, and it was asking if either Antigone or Creon was a... How much you said gas at Sam's was? Like a dollar something. Like a dollar... Something like that. Nine, Wasn't it? Like $1.19. $1.19 something. Huh? $1.13. Something. Sorry, guys. Um, gas questions. So, um, a martyr is someone who is willing to suffer or die rather than give up his or her causes or beliefs. And it asks about whether Antigone is one. Um, so I would argue that somewhat she is one. She doesn't really give up what she believes in, but she is um, fearful towards the end. It does seem she's a little fearful and doesn't completely look forward to dying, of course, which some martyrs actually do. Ooh, sorry, guys. Um, then we have question six. Um, how do Creon and Antigone ultimately see themselves and their roles in this scene? So Creon really seems angry, but he feels like he's being fair. So he's angry that people have um, gone against his wishes, but he is feeling fair. Like he has done the best he can with what he's been provided. And Antigone um, feels like her brother has been wronged, of course, but she feels like she's right in what she's been doing as well. Um, she feels like she's following the orders of the gods and, um, that she is doing the right thing. Um, so, you know, it's kind of half and half there. But they both seem pretty angry, but feel that they are doing what's right and what's just. Um, for eight, uh, we have, what does the chorus mean by the dreadful flower of his rage slowly withered? So, talking about anger, um, probably Creon's anger, um, and talking about whether or not he's still angry about what Antigone has done, which we can assume by that phrase, probably not. Um, if a flower will to get softer, it starts to die, it isn't there anymore. So if the dreadful fear starts to die, it starts to wither, um, maybe he's not as angry as he once was with Antigone or even with his son, Haman. Um, then we also have um, question nine. How do gods and fate uh, play a role in this scene? So really the gods have kind of left. So gods and fate, like things that are going to happen um, without uh, any change possible. Um, we don't see any of that. We see the gods kind of being absent. We see the um, the chorus kind of admitting that maybe the gods aren't there to support them anymore because of some wrongdoing done by somebody there, which we can assume the wrongdoing is done by either Creon or Antigone, probably Creon. Um, and that brings us to our last section. So we start off the scene with Creon talking to um, Tiresias, which is the blind um, kind of fortune teller in the tale. Um, and he sees things and he's kind of saying, well, in the past you've listened to my advice, Creon, um, and it's helped you out. And Creon's like, well, yes, of course, you know, I listen to good advice. Um, and he's like, okay, well, you must choose because your, your fate's kind of on the edge of going either good or bad again. So you need to make a, make a choice and you need to make the right choice based on good advice advice and data. 
um, which of course we know Creon has not been doing at, um, to this point. Um, and he says, Tiresias says that he's been seeing a lot of bad omens, so bad, bad stuff, weird stuff has been happening. He gave offerings to the gods, but the gods, you know, aren't responding to their prayers and their offerings. Um, and we find out that he is blind here. He's like, you know, although I can't see, this boy tells me that blah, 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 blah is happening. Um, and again, the gods are not listening to us. Um, they're not accepting our sacrifices and they are doing this because uh, once they give up their intransience, so their will unwillingness to compromise. So they're doing this because, Creon, you're being stubborn. You're not listening. You're unwilling to change. You're unwilling to compromise. Um, so they've left you, and that puts us at, in Thebes in a bad position. Um, and it's showing it um, as very, very um, selfish. Creon is very selfish, which we've talked about before. Um, the spread of abusive insults. So... Creon's just like, you're just here to insult me, you're not trying to help me out, you just want money from me, you're trying to make me look foolish, um, but Tiresias is like, nope, you're doing that to yourself. So, um, Tiresias finishes his conversation, um, Creon finishes, like, telling him, oh, you're just here to get rich, whatever, blah, 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 um, you're just here to benefit yourself, and Tiresias says, um, oh, by the way, um, your son's gonna die in not too long. You only have a couple more days with him at the most. So, mm, might want to listen to me. Um, and then he's like, you know, I'm not here to lie. I'm not here to help myself. I'm here to help this community and help you. But if you want to take it as me going against you, be that as it may. Um, then the chorus leader kind of chimes in after Tiresias is led away by the boy that's with him. Um, and they're like, you know, hey, Creon, you know, he's never lied before, so why would he start now? Um, I'm not, and Creon says, basically, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, go against what I thought just because I'm afraid or you think this is the best option. I'm not going to pick fear over strength. Um, and they continue their conversation, and then he realizes maybe this wasn't a good idea. And he's like, you know, I should probably go um, release Antigone. So that's what he decides to do. Um, and he doesn't just send somebody, he decides right away that he's going to go do it. So he gives up, but then quickly leaves with these attendants to go release Antigone from, um, from the cave that they sent her to. And then we have the sixth ode. It's really talking about the gods and honoring them. Um, and it's saying kind of like a prayer just to kind of give them help and guidance in this time. Um, even though they've kind of messed up, and by they, they kind of mean Creon, but of course Creon's their king, so whatever Creon says, goes. Um, and then we'll read the next portion, or excuse me, the last portion next week. Um, the questions you're supposed to answer for this week, or the assignments you're supposed to complete, will be posted um, in Google Classroom. Um, and I will also give those out as needed as well. Um, if there are any questions, as always, guys, please let me know. Um, remember to check in with me on Mondays, and all the directions and due dates will be posted on Google Classroom unless you need specific directions otherwise. Um, be good, guys. Uh, try not to stress too much. We're going to get through this again. After this week, it's only three more weeks. So keep pushing, keep doing great, and let's finish up this text.